I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of breeze through some of these demos um, really quick uh, because I want to get to some of the cloud stuff. And I want to make sure also we get to the end to where we can go ahead and get rich uh, going with a, uh, with a TPS demo. One thing I do want to say is as data centers scale out, right, you have to start, you know, start load balancing these things. Or if you have multiple data centers, you have to be able to load balance the data centers. Public internet, you have two real options. You know, BGP or basically uh, GSLB. Two, two viable options, right? And most enterprises don't have the option. They don't have their own AS. They can't actually set you know, transient attributes that are propagated throughout the net, right? They just have to say, all right, I got some GSLB and I'm going to do that. And it works pretty well. So this is how you end up scaling out data centers. So we're going to focus on this, uh, this segment real quick. And since we're in a demo mode, something will go wrong. Do you, do you mind if I rewind just a little bit? This might be a quick answer. Yeah. But you mentioned earlier, uh, um, as an app developer, you don't care about the network, but you're also looking for a more collaborative experience with the network. Can you elaborate on what you mean by that? I'm, yeah. I'm pondering that for the Right last now, I don't bit. care what the network because I have no control over it. Okay. I don't have any way to actually change the outcome because it's usually a different group or political structure managing that. Right. And that's why you don't care about the network? That's, that's why I don't care now. So what are you looking for in, your, in a collaborative experience? So let's just go ahead and, and, and use one use case, let's say around SIP. Maybe I want to go ahead and do uh, a you know, specific, um, I want to actually, from the application perspective, let's say we come up with this new really cool application, right? And I really want to make sure call quality is good. Maybe I want to push content over a stream that you normally wouldn't you know, see, and it requires, a, again, certain DLP functions. <coughs> Maybe I want to go ahead and signal upstream or downstream that says, hey, I'm getting ready to send some sensitive data. Make sure it goes over path A versus path B. Because I want to make sure that uh, you know, th this data isn't leaked or, or whatever requirement there is. So being able to actually uh, also get call stats or, or basically volume stats or, or telemetry from the infrastructure that I can say, I'm going to open up, let's say, 15 more calls on this bridge. But I want to make sure I have capacity on the network before I just start randomly start doing things. Isn't that just standard call admission control? It, it, it is. Okay. It is. But one thing that I notice is that as we start going over the public internet with, with more and more uh, applications, that SIP may be a transport, but I may, do some, I may use a, uh, another protocol. Okay. Right. No, that's, that's fine. I just, I, uh, this is a topic that's close to my heart, and I, I like to understand what exactly people in that space want to get out of the network and then what the folks in the network side think that they can offer as an experience to make the network more consumable yeah. in the same way that computes become. Yeah. I think call quality is something where when you start looking at feedback loop and, and really a collaborative you know, application suites, mm -hmm. that's where it becomes a little bit more important uh, is where I may be using different protocols that may not have things built in that actually allow me to ensure pathing or quality or things of that nature. Uh, well, I don't know if my mic is on, but I can you know, shed some light on that. So think about the collaboration aspect of it. Really, today, a lot of information is siloed. For example, traditionally, networking devices have a lot of information, but the, you didn't have a MIP for it, so you can't get that information out. Now what's happening is a lot of the different devices and the applications and services and whatnot are producing a lot of information, and if they publish that information, and the appropriate entities can consume that information, they can make meaningful collaborative decision even about, without knowing each other because they have standard ways of collaboration. So like, That's, as, as a very specific example, you've got an infrastructure team focused primarily on route switch. Your argument is that they are the ones that should take that information because they are the experts in that infrastructure, not the application developers. No, I'm saying that if you have data, it's really the power of big data, if you will. You, in the operation, you're generating a lot of data. You only have certain means of consuming that data, but if you publish the data, there are other entities that can make meaningful sense out of the data. You don't know who it is, but you're providing accurate information, and other entities are able to take inf that information and use it usefully. It's really the collaborative aspect where you are not really doing anything explicitly, but you're just sharing information, and it's really the social networking aspect of devices, if you will. You, you know, you think about everything we do in technology is about information. And protocols are really good at, you know, getting information from point A to point B in a really standard way. But it's not up to me to tell people who are working at higher levels, who are creative, who are artists, who are, who are people trying to, you know, figure out new ways to, to collaborate and bring people together, how to use their data. 
And so this is, this is something where when we start looking at the notion of collaboration, it, I think we can actually follow trends that are happening in social media. You know, every day you see a new app that comes out and you're like, ah, that's a new angle on the same thing. But it, you know, we have this really cool twist to the plot that allows us to uh, do something cool and new. And so that's where just thinking ahead of, we can't envision everything that could potentially happen today. But what we know is, is focusing on data and giving control to everyone else actually enables us to empower everyone else in the process. And that's kind of the thought process, whether it's a protocol level or upper layer. Um, you know, that's something where we start thinking about it. And unfortunately, we can geek out on this. And, and I just want to say, these three guys right here, uh, so over there is a peer of mine, uh, Guru Deep Kamat, uh, who's also on the SE inside of the else. He's also a principal architect here. You know, Rich and, and um, and basically, Raj, unfortunately, we can go off on wild tangents Chris. because we just have so much passion about these subjects. Uh, but for the sake of time, I do want to say one thing. I'm not going to go through a full demo uh, because uh, I will go ahead and just say, okay, we can X out credit card numbers and just talk about a, a real world problem. Um, but one of the things is we have lots of proxies. So a load balancer typically says, I have this TCP port. I'm going to go ahead and take this flow and put it to a waypoint or endpoint. Right, that's what load balancing does. But a proxy, right, a full-on application proxy says, I'm going to look at messages at the application layer and make decisions. I may rewrite content on the fly. I may modify the application because I am an application. And if you look at things like HTTP, if you look at FTP, you know, these are, uh, these are specific protocols that have their own language. They have their own messages going back and forth. You know, MySQL, MSSQL, I can actually inject uh, you know, new queries based off of something coming in because I understand MySQL. I, I, I unfortunately project myself as an ADC sometimes, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I work too much. You know, that guy in the lab who, who you know, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, becomes his, his project. Uh, you know, things like Speedy. One cool thing about Speedy, you know, is HTTP 2.0 comes up. And when it gets ratified, we kind of have similar infrastructure in place if that's the path it goes, right? Uh, so we end up really focusing on the message, messaging layer because we have to say, ultimately, as, as a corporation, it's all about the app for us because that's, that's one thing that's solving the business problem. And again, that's the lifeblood of IT. Now, this is our, our currently shipping interface. And I'm going to go into our 4.0 product here in a, a, a few moments, uh, which is our evolution of our platform. And the reason why this is important is the way this was designed, it was designed without the DevOps in mind. It was really focused from an appliance, corp, you know, appliance perspective. And this is something where when you start looking at it, you know, a lot of uh, appliance companies, they come from route switch you know, and slowly start working their way up the stack. One cool thing about SDN, which we'll get into it, it's really cool from a, from a, you know, a templating perspective, from a, a capability perspective, but you still need services up top. And this is where uh, you know, w the evolution is going to be uh, made now. So let me go ahead and actually get into the demo uh, so we can actually move to the next section. So we can make sure we can do a, uh, what was it, a hairy DDoS attack? Oh, uh, I think I already have this open. Yeah, I do. So there's a website. And one of the things we didn't actually talk about uh, is a, uh, by the way, our marketing team did this, and it's really cool because it throws your eyes off. You're like, what's wrong with that person? And you realize it's just like slicing. I thought we were going to meet that guy today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Mike. <laughs> all of the above. Is it a guy, though? It's actually uh, all the above. So one of the things we have is a website that's protected by, a, uh, by, again, our authentication engine. So in our new platform, we have OCSP stapling. We support SAML as a security provider, uh, you know, Radius, uh, Kerberos, Windows integrated auth within TLM. So from an auth perspective in the enterprise, we support these protocols that, again, are common in the enterprise. Um, so let me go ahead and log in. Uh, this, thank you, Taka. This is our lovely assistant, Taka, who actually worked really hard to get a lot of this stuff done. <laughs> <laughs> and that needs to be a one, not a bang. Right. 
So I go ahead and log in and nope, I don't want to save that password. So now I just protected a resource with our uh, authentication module. Uh, and now I go ahead and look at View Commons. As you can see, there's a credit card information here that's been you know, X'd out and a social security number that's been X'd out. The reason why this is important as you're trying to protect your apps, because we understand messages, you can actually virtual patch applications to start messing up. So to me, it's actually a really uh, powerful to, uh, to, you know, when the network guy is told that, hey, by the way, uh, we have this problem, can you help us? He has, this, he has this bag of tricks, right? I have Aflex, which again is TCL. We can do all sorts of eventing with it. So when I say, I see this HTTP message, go ahead and rewrite, or I see the server respond with this, you know, do this. Now, if we look at the web page, just to know that the same web page, <laughs> What kind of um, monitoring um, insight that you get into what it's doing? What kind of logs, what kind of troubleshooting tools do you guys provide for that? Because if you're doing a lot of rewrites and things like that and you're troubleshooting and see what it's doing. Yeah, so one of the things that you have the ability to do is actually, and, and actually that's a great question. Let me just show you one, uh, one part on our, in our environment. Let me just show you an Aflex, for example. When I go ahead and have a Aflex fire off, I can actually track every portion of the message and actually log everything based off of events firing off. So Aflex itself is a great troubleshooting tool. Because I'm involved with the, at the application layer, I can log headers, I can uh, basically, uh, you know, if I, like for instance, this host switching rule, I can say, on basically if an LB event failed or I wasn't able to connect to the server, I can log that. But we also natively do that when we have actually, you know, our logging in our syslog. But Aflex is actually an excellent troubleshooting tool uh, where you can get the exact information you want uh, when you want it. Now one thing I do want to talk about is, uh, you know, being able to couple network state, application state, and server state, which is really what an ADC does to, in order to affect business logic. One of the things that we have on board is, again, canned health monitors. So if I want to do HTTP health monitoring and make sure the server's up, I can go ahead and check for error codes or I could check for specific strings. But we also have, you know, again, for databases and, and again, I could take, you know, let's say application uh, tier, web tier, and a database tier time together as one health monitor and say all these components need to be up and running for this app to be available. So you can actually either couple or decouple infrastructure based off of your needs. Now from an external programming perspective, I have the ability from a, uh, again, this is just, I go ahead and put in uh, you know, a Python script here, and I can now health check. By the way, did I answer your question? I think so. Okay, sorry, I kinda, all right, thanks. So one of the uh, interesting aspects is we have the ability with our external monitor, just like we do our canned <coughs> health monitors, to actually, uh, you know, TCL, Python, uh, you know, Bash, uh, I think uh, Perl, you ha have the ability to monitor systems. Now, the cool thing about this is, is I could actually sit here and say, I'm checking this server, I'm starting to see issues, I'm through my health monitor making a call to AWS to spin up more instances. So this is actually through their API. Can it, you, uh, just real quick, install Python packages? Okay, so Python packages today, we do not do that. Okay. Okay, uh, this is something that we're actually, let's just be clear, we're going to endeble, enable DevOps. And one of the core aspects is giving everyone control and flexibility. Yeah. Now one of the things we have to do is, historically as an appliance, we have to go through and say, you know what, we have to do this right. If we just open the gate, you know, we, we have to think about our, a lot of our customers and, and you, know, you know, especially in our, in our federal spaces, we can't just open the gates like that. So, but our plans and intent is actually to do exactly that, to give you guys the power of the control, and I'll cover that in, in the uh, cloud section. Okay. 